Good morning, all my comic collecting friends. It's Matt, Comic Order 410, here to bring you installment part 30 of my Keys variants and such. But uh, before I get into the books here, just wanted to thank my friend Tom Ryan. He knows I collect Dark Horse Presents, and he found Dark Horse Presents 35 with Predator at his store. And uh, he picked it up, and he mailed it to me. So definitely want to thank you for that random act of kindness, Tom. I definitely appreciate it. Got this book last week. I was very happy to finally get my hands on this. Um, this is the Firestorm 61 Superman Comics logo test variant cover from 1987. And I already have the Justice League number three, which was the other Superman logo cover they did. This one was a little bit harder to find. Got an okay deal on it. Not the best, um, but compared to what other people were charging on eBay, it wasn't bad at all. I'd give this copy probably a VF to a VF plus has two little marks in the white, which kind of sucks. Um, pretty nice everywhere else. Staples, not perfect there with a minute spine rolling. And then you have some stress around the edges of the staple there, but not too bad. And, uh, these are not easy to come by in the wild at all. So glad I finally got both of those knocked out. Um, next up, a big, uh, big purchase of the week. I might have, I don't know, I paid pretty much fair market value for this book, but I'm a big Hellboy fan. I have a lot of Hellboy books, but I don't have any of when, you know, when you're talking the first appearance of Hellboy or whatever, there's three books that come up. Dime Press is the prototype of Hellboy. San Diego Comic Con Comics number two is first Hellboy, and then Next Men 21 is first color Hellboy, so uh, I felt like I needed to get one in my collection. I've been toying around with it for a while and just haven't got around to it. And I went to my local shop and they had this CGC 9.2 copy of Next Men 21, so I bought it. Um, like I said, I didn't get a great deal, but I didn't get a bad deal. I'd say I paid maybe 20 to 40 bucks under what these go for on eBay, so very happy to finally have one of Hellboy's first appearances. Uh, next up, this is a great series from IDW, Lock and Key. It's written by Joe Hill, who is uh, Stephen King's son. And these books have gone up quite a bit since they came out. Um, as with most IDW books, they have really high quality cover stock and paper, so they're easy to keep in uh, near mint. These are my unread copies. These are in very high grade and very happy to have them. That's Lock and Key, Volume 1, Number 1. Number two, really like that cover by Gabriel Rodriguez. Number three, issue number four. This looks like some kind of variant or something says gold foil, but it's a uh, it's actually the regular cover. Very cool cover though. Lock and key number five. And the final issue of the first mini series, Lock and Key number six. It's a very good series. I recommend picking up the trades if you don't want to pay for the individual issues. Um, fan of the Logan's Run movie. Didn't get into the TV show quite as much, but um, bought most of the comics. Of course, I'm missing number eight. Is the only issue of the whole run I'm missing, and that's the most expensive issue because it's a. Uh, First solo Thanos story as a backup, but uh, nevertheless, got um, Logan's run number one here. Very early Marvel work from George Perez, Al Milgram Inc. That cover. Um, again, I want to recommend this not just the Thor fans, this is a great read. Period. Um, the Loki four issue miniseries and uh, has stunning painted art. The interior art's the same as the covers by Asad Ribic. This book is amazing. So I recommend people go pick these up. They were somewhat expensive right after they came out, but they've tapered off a good bit. So definitely hunt these down or buy the trade if you want a good read. But that's issue number one. Stunning Asad Ribic cover here. Number two. 
number three. And issue number four. Excellent stuff. Um, Dynamite's Lone Ranger series was actually very good. I thought a bit underrated, too. Um, John Cassidy did some amazing covers here. Sorry about the focus. But this is the, there we go, this is the number one uh, variant from Baltimore Comic Con. And I got it signed by John Cassidy. This is issue number five. I thought I grabbed the regular number one, but I didn't have the complete run of this. But I guess I just pulled out some of the Cassidy covers I really like. That's another beauty. He's one of the best in the business. Um, this is one of my favorite Lone Ranger covers by John Cassidy. This is issue seven. And I really apologize about the glare here. There we go. Um, just a gorgeous cover, and I got him to sign that last year. Lone Ranger number 24, another absolute beauty of a cover by Cassidy here of uh, Tonto and Lone Ranger. Next up, one of my favorite series, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub by Kazuo Koike and Goseki Kojima. I hope I pronounced them right, but this is the quintessential samurai tale uh the movies are incredible um the comics are incredible the first comics american reprints here they all have covers by well not all of them but frank miller did a bunch of covers here uh like the first 10 or 13 and just amazing stuff um uh, it's a great read and i've actually i've recommended this to a few people recently is hey this is a good book you can pick up cheap and the only issue I'm missing out of the whole run is 39. And when I looked them up on eBay, I realized, like many comics in this market right now, these books are no longer cheap. People on eBay, I don't know if they're selling them for that, but they're asking $10 and $15 for one random common issue of this series. And I think it's ridiculous, but um, it's still a great read. And Dark Horse has reprinted these in large volumes. So definitely worth reading. Um Great story about uh, Ido Ogami and, you know, his family's murdered. And uh, he decides to take his son with him. And he's a ronin, a masterless samurai. And he he's basically a sword for hire. But he's, you know, he's also after the daimo that, that he used to work for that killed his, had his family killed. So it's just an excellent story. And I highly recommend it. Anyway, this is First Comics Lone Wolf and Cub number one. Frank Miller cover there. Issue number two. Beautiful Frank Miller cover to issue number three. I really, really dig this one. Another beauty by Frank Miller and his wife Lynn Varley. It's Lone Wolf and Cub number four. That was a really good story, that one. Um, issue 5, still Frank Miller. Issue 6, really, really love this. Uh, this color, I mean, sorry, this cover, the color and the uh, patterns he used on their clothing. Excellent cover. Lone Wolf and Cub number 7. And let me just scoot over here a little bit. Here's Lone Wolf and Cub number eight. Another beauty of a Frank Miller cover here. Love the uh, color schemes, color palettes he used. Issue number nine. This is another great Frank Miller cover here. Uh, all one tone, just kind of your, your paper parchment tone. With uh, pencil and ink and red ink only. Really dig that one. It's a beauty. Skip along here to Lone Wolf and Cub 13. And the great Bill Sankevich contributed this cover here. Always like his stuff. He also did cover to Lone Wolf and Cub 15. 
And jump way ahead uh, to issue 40. And these covers were done by the great Mike Plug, who did some amazing Bronze Age art on uh, Marvel's horror titles. And, I mean, I think... I think he's one of the most underrated and undermentioned Bronze Age artists out there. He's great. But uh, this is issue 40, his stunning cover. And another Plug cover to 43. Just a beauty. And this is the final issue of Lone Wolf and Cub here. This is issue number 45. So just need to track down 39, and then that is complete. And that is a great series. Speaking of great series, this is the Long Shot Mini from 1985. Uh, Six-issue mini. And I believe this was Art Adams' first artwork at Marvel. Um, I know he did some stuff for Eclipse before this, but this is the first time I saw Art Adams' artwork. And I was about nine years old, I think, eight or nine years old. And I just fell in love with his work from this series. And... uh Here's this beautiful cover to issue one. Long shot number two. Art also did the interiors on these books, which is great. Gorgeous cover to long shot three. Long shot number four. Really dig this cover with She-Hulk punching him out and Spidey in the background there. And one of these issues, um, somebody might be able to jog my memory. It's been so long since I read these. But one of these issues, I'm, I believe maybe five or six, is the first appearance of Mojo. So uh, maybe if somebody knows, they can let me know. But this is long shot number five. And the oversized final issue, number six, with uh, Spiral and Mojo. So that is an excellent miniseries. I really, really like that. Um, here we have Dark Horse Comics, Madman Comics number one by Mike Alred. Dig his stuff too. And last up, Mage. I'm a big Matt Wagner fan. Love Grendel and Mage. Um, really weird. Uh, I have most of the Mage issues except I need one, two, and three. So that is a big glaring hole in my mage run. I believe it's only like 16, 17 issues anyway, but uh, I need to get on those. But this is my mage number five here, and it's signed by Matt Wagner. And I believe, again, it's escaped me. Either five or six here is uh, the first color appearance of Grendel, but I got both of those signed. This is number six, and Matt Wagner signed that as well. Way back in what looks like 85 or 89. Um, here's Mage number 15. Beautiful cover here and um, also Grendel backups in this. This is the next series, Mage the Hero Define, and this is the American Entertainment, known back in the 80s as American Comics. I'm sure many of you ordered from their catalog, but uh, this is their variant to that series. This is the Virgin variant to uh, Mage the Hero Defined, number one. And this copy definitely has some damage on the spine, but this is my Magneto number one that I got from the Hero Initiative signed by Bill Sankiewicz. And uh, it's my only Bill Sankiewicz signed book, so I'm very happy to own that. But that will do it for this installment. Um, Thank you all for stopping by. As always, I always appreciate your time and your support. Everyone take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and enjoy your comic books.